Today I want to show you all the things you can harvest from a kitchen garden about 10 days after the last day of frost. It's a lot. Hey there, my name's Nicole Burke and I am on a mission to get everybody gardening. That includes you. So today I wanna to inspire you with my harvest from my kitchen garden. I've got about 90 square feet of garden space here and we are about 10, 15 days from the last day of frost here in the Chicago area. It's June 1st and I wanna show you all the things you can harvest um, when frost basically just finished. So let's start out with my awesome Napa cabbage. These cabbage babies are so delicious. I've been cutting from these cabbage plants all along as they've grown. And uh, just starting this past week, I've started to harvest the entire heads. The weather's really starting to warm up here in the Chicago area, apart from a couple of days of cold we had. And so I don't want these to bolt before I get to eat them. So I've been making tons of stir fry and um, Asian flavored salads. It's so yummy. I put like almonds, mandarin oranges, and sesame seed. And then I put all these Asian flavorings like some liquid aminos and um, sesame oil, all this yummy stuff. So cabbages are on the go right now. I've got at least probably 12 or 13 more cabbage heads that I'll harvest over the next few weeks. Hopefully I can store those down in my basement for a little bit this summer so I don't have to eat cabbage like every day of my life for the next 60 days. Um, next up is my radishes. So this was one of the less kind of surprise, you know, impressive harvests recently, but I was just finishing up my French, French breakfast radishes. Tons of greens, they've been sitting in the sun for a few minutes, so they're wilting, but I'm gonna um, actually wilt these on the stove with some balsamic vinegar. They'll be so delicious. Then I've got um, parsley. So I've been harvesting parsley for weeks now. This is curly parsley. I've got flat leaf and curly parsley that I've been harvesting a lot. And I also have these chives. So I could do this pretty much 10 times over. I harvested some chive blossoms and just chives themselves. And I've already kind of started to fill up this um, this basket with things that I harvested in previous videos, but now we're gonna harvest a few more things. So I love these simple scissors. I love using like needle nose pruners when I'm working in the garden, um, but I love using these to, to harvest with. So I'm gonna put down my basket and in these front beds, I'm gonna cut a little bit more red Russian kale. So I noticed actually that these leaves over here are kind of shading some of my warm season plants. So I'm gonna go in here and cut from these plants a little bit on the outside, wherever they're leaning in on the interior of the bed. So these kale plants will serve me. They were put in here the last week of March. I started them indoors in February. And uh, these kale plants will stay in the garden all summer long. And uh, I'm gonna be saying Kelly yeah, for a long time. I'll probably be tired of these before they are tired of me. Um, so that is some red Russian kale. I'm growing like three or four varieties of kale right now. And uh, this one is super happy. So that's next up for my harvest is some red Russian kale. Next up, we have some Swiss chard. So Swiss chard is one of my favorite greens to grow. It's um, warming up here and I did not water the garden this morning. So you can see these, um, these plants are kind of losing their rigidity. They need some water. But uh, I'm gonna harvest one or two of these leaves and then we'll step to the back. These plants look a little bit better back here because they don't get quite as much early morning sun. So you can see these plants here. They look awesome, super colorful. This is rainbow Swiss chard, bright lights. Look how vibrant that is. Those red colors, I don't, I'm not like a nutritionist or anything, but from what I understand, when you eat that color, it's like really good for your body. So Swiss chard, I'm adding to the mix here. We'll put this in the harvest basket. These can go into a salad. You can make a stir fry with these, all kinds of yummy options. And I love the colors. It really adds lots of color right now for spring 
when everything else is kind of just green, if you know what I mean. All right, we've also got some cutting celery. So let me show you this. Cutting celery is unique. It's different than, um, than a celery you buy from the store. So to harvest this, you just come in to the outside of the plant and cut like that. So you cut the outside stalks and it'll keep growing from the inside. You can see the new ribs forming. And these are so delicious on a salad or by themselves. You can see they're nice. They got a nice crunchy rib to them and you can eat the leaves as well. You typically won't even get the leaves when you buy the grocery store variety, um, but these are so nutritious. They kind of have a flavor that resembles parsley um, when you eat them. So my basket, my friends, is getting a little heavy. Um, what else do we have here? So I could also harvest some more parsley here. I've got spinach in these beds. I'm gonna move on to the next set of beds just so you don't get bored of all my harvesting. We added these trellises. Cucumbers are gonna be going up these beds, but I wanna show you this next kind of kale. This is Toscano kale. I have a whole video all about getting more from your kale plants, and part of that is harvesting often. So I'm just grabbing plant, uh, leaves from the outside of the plant, just like that. These are a little bit more rigid if you uh, harvest them in the morning. I recommend doing that rather than in the heat of the day. We're videoing, and so you just gotta do it when you can, but it's almost noon here, which is a little late to be harvesting greens because they're like, ah, I'm hot and stressed. Um, but that adds a little bit more kale to my mix. So I'm gonna put this in my basket as well. Then um, I could harvest a little bit of this lavender. I could put this in a little vase. I can root it if I want to. I could put it in a little bathroom vase. You can see that one's actually about to bloom. Maybe I shouldn't have harvested that one. But I do love having a couple little snips of lavender in, um, in a little vase, like in a guest bathroom or something like that. They're so beautiful and they're so fragrant. They're awesome. All right. Moving on to the next back beds. Oh, I do want to show you my cilantro is officially bolting, um, but I still harvest it. I mix it into dips and things like this, and I'll come in and also cut from, I'll cut the main bolting stem. Eventually I am going to let it bolt, but I just stop the process. And then you can cut these exterior leaves and they're not quite as, um, you know, they haven't really bolted yet. So they're a little bit better. So I'm gonna throw some cilantro on here as well. And then finally in the back beds, we have these gorgeous uh, purple mustards, which I absolutely love. They're so pretty, so colorful, just like the Swiss chard. And I harvest these much the same way I harvest most of the greens. So I come into the exterior, outer leaves, and you just cut right there. You can hear that, hear that crunch. So the ribs are pretty crunchy. The leaves are really nice and soft. It's fantastic for a stir fry or for, um, for doing like, I do like a Southern greens. You guys know I'm from the South, right? So I'll do a Southern greens dish where I'll take butter and onion and um, saute the onion. And then I cut these up and I just let them cook. Add a little bit of extra, um, what's it called? Apple cider vinegar. And it's so delicious. I could just like drink the sauce. It's so yummy. So um, these are my purple mustards. Now, as you can see, there's so much more I could harvest from these beds, like this stir fry mix. I could harvest all this and make a gorgeous, delicious stir fry, but I don't want to cut it until I'm literally just about to eat it because um, they will wilt all these greens with the heat coming on. Um, these greens will wilt pretty fast as soon as I harvest them. That's why it always is a mystery to me how greens look okay at the grocery store because I can literally cut these and in like two seconds, they're like falling to pieces. You're like, hmm, what do they put in that stuff from the grocery? So my friends, my basket overfloweth. Check out all of this spring goodness. So I've got purple mustards, I've got Napa cabbages, I've got Swiss chard, I've got radishes, I've got dinosaur kale, 
red Russian kale, cilantro, parsley, parsley's here, chives, um, and so many other things. And then I want you to take a step back as we look at all this harvest and look at how full the beds still are, right? So I've harvested all of this goodness, but there's still so much growing. So um, this is really why you want to intensively plant your garden and make it so that there's something to come out and cut from your garden every single day. It makes it so much more interesting and fun and delicious. So I hope my harvest inspires you to harvest more too. If you wanna get started in your own kitchen garden, we got all the resources to help make that happen. So you can check out the links below this video. Um, I have a full online course called Kitchen Garden Academy. And I have a book called Kitchen Garden Revival that teaches you the step-by-step -step to build your own kitchen garden just the way I did. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.